Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, March 24, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What's on the docket today? What are we going to discuss? We're going to discuss a number of things. Obviously, we're going to discuss, did we see a bottom? We had a rip your face off rally today. There should be more to come. We'll talk about that, and we'll also talk about the other side of that equation. We are the umpire. We will look at both sides of the tape. I'll give you my full and complete thought process. Be careful, because you're going to be getting inside my head. Then, we're going to take a look at a couple of ways, probably more than a couple of ways, that you can make money. So you're going to need to pay attention during that segment. It's not a coincidence where the high of the day was today. It's not a coincidence where the market went during the day to certain numbers. We're going to take a look at all that stuff. If they continue higher, who's they? The market participants. If they continue higher, where are they going? What's the number on the upside? We'll take a crack at that one too. So what was really going on today? It's very simple. It's the Fed slash government rescue operation. They're pumping up the market and once it gets going a little bit you have the shorts run for cover you have the FOMO kicking in fear of missing out people want to hop on board buying begets buying and that's how price gets pumped up but the difference today versus some other days where we had up days and then the market failed we've had up days and then the market failed so we don't want to see that again if you're in the bull camp We need to see follow through. That's the one component that's been missing on the couple of rally attempts when we were, air quotes now, looking for a low. We're still looking for a low. We're in the zone. Price is above the point when we said we were looking for a zone, when the market put in a tail low. So this is the same general price area. So is this the end of the rally? Of course not. We need to see follow through. There's a lot more upside to be had if we can get the follow-through but the main difference between today's rally and the other days when we had a rally and then a failure is the stocks across the board in basically every sector when i look at my list my own personal list about 450 stocks and it's pretty much representative of the three major indices and a few more things to boot Everything was up. I only had a small handful of stocks that were down. Likely a few isolated cases. But the other side of that is everything was up. And it wasn't just up 1 or 2%. Everything was just getting a helium boost. A, that's indicative of the shorts running for cover. There comes a time when, let's just say, a trader, a money manager, whatever it is, who is short a stock for example there comes a time when that person says hey i'm up a lot i'm gonna book the deal in order to book the deal what do they do they have to buy back in the more buying that occurs the more lift in the price of the stock that occurs shorts run for cover the stock goes up as the stock's moving up the momentum traders show up they want to hop on board and force the ride higher We might as well follow this story to the end after the momentum players, once they're finished with the stock and they take their profits, who's next? It's the unassuming investor at home. It's John and Mary Lunch Bucket. They're going to show up thinking the coast is clear. They're going to buy in right before what? The next pullback. They do it every single time. They're usually coming in at the top end of the A B, C pattern, it's the A leg. They're coming in at the top of the A. They get out at the low of the B, and then what? And then they miss C. Happens over and over and over again, almost without failure. Before we discuss on follow-through, where are they going? And by the way, we'll also discuss the other side. What if they fail again? What if this was another one-day wonder? We'll talk about that too. But first... We have to take a look at inside the numbers. There is a method to the madness today. You need to pay attention. Money was made today. Real money was made today. We had the market lock, stock, and barrel. So now it becomes one of these things. If you're active in the market during the trading day and you're not getting or 
participating, part of the community of Inside the Numbers, then soon you're going to be wearing the schmuck shirt. And understand, I say that with love. But you have to see this today. The pre-market morning notes, the market was getting an early boost. So we know that it's about the rescue package. It's about the stimulus package as soon as Congress is finished playing Color War. Looks like they're about done. At least, that's what they say. Have they ever been wrong, incorrect, or lied before? We'll reserve that to your own judgment. But the main point is, it's really similar or even the same as the Fed. It's the tail wagging the dog. The tail is the market, the dog is Congress, and the tail, meaning the market, is telling Congress, hey, look it, if you don't resolve this issue and you don't give us what we want in terms of money, we're going to take you out behind the woodshed again. Go ahead and read the rest of the pre-market morning notes. I need you to focus on something extremely important. How about ES2350 and SPY325? Remember those numbers for later. And also realize that this stuff is put up on the board 6.30, 7, 7.30 in the morning. Here's the rest of the pre-market notes. We didn't have any stocks on the move today. Why? Because everything was getting a boost at the open. You're not going to step in front of a freight train and try and short stocks when everything else is getting a huge lift at the open. It's a matter of reading the tape. Sometimes you're willing to sell into strength, you're willing to sell at resistance. There are other times when you're willing to ride the wave. Now, I'm not going to be right all the time, obviously, but today was one of those days where you can ride the wave. Hashtag reading the tape. What else we got? Let's go up and see what happened as the day got kicked off. You always want to start out early with an awareness they can shoot right up, and we're providing numbers of where they can shoot up to. We'll get to some more of those a little bit later. We want to make sure traders are aware of Trick and Company. Traders are aware they can drive the price right up and then come back. They can drop it real quick, find support, and then drive price up. Where would the support be? You need to know that. It's one thing to know that it's Trick and Company dropping price. It's another thing to know... Where is price going to find stability? Let's scroll up some more, see what's what. Here's another one. Right out of the shoot, 9.35, we're already zeroing in on a couple of things. A, we know that they're going to make an effort, not necessarily right out of the gate, but at some point they're making an effort for 2400. It's a big fat round number. We know about big fat round numbers. They're moving in 100 handle chunks. They're going to get to the big fat round number. But... They don't have to get there right away. So what's in between where price was at the time and the big fat round number? Focus in on ES2385. It's always a give or take, especially in this volatility. But keep that in mind also, along with the 2350 we discussed before. Now, we have to go back and forth between the ES and the SPY, especially when the volatility is what it is and we have these huge overnight and pre-market moves in the market, I have to take everything into an account, so I have to use every tool in the bag. So already in the early going, we're focused in on they're going to go to higher numbers. Let's move it along. So you can see the 955 post. They're doing what we said they would do. They're doing the thing where they go back up and test the early high. Can they get through? Of course they can. Anything goes. I just wanted to state that. It's an awareness. But they should test it or at least come close to the high. Now, what they do up there is a whole different ballgame, so I'm watching to find out what the next move is after that. What's the setup going forward? That's my job. Read the market. Reading the tape. And, of course, another thing, treat it as a business. Traders who are long for the write-up need to book profits along the way. You never know and need to treat it as a business. Just stating the facts. Let's move it along. Here we go. 1025. If they get above the high of the day, remember the area cited earlier. 2385. Then the big fat round number of 2400. Now, another awareness thing. Already at about 1025, 1030, I'm looking for them to put in a mid-morning pivot. Keep that in mind. Now, here's something else that's extremely important. It's kind of like reading the story within the story. 
if they're hitting the numbers that I expect them to hit, and then they're starting to do the thing that I expect them to do next, for example, put in a mid-morning pivot, and then they go ahead and do it, if they're doing everything I think they should do, what is it? It's a duck. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, then it's a duck. So if the market is acting technically sound, if it's doing everything expectations say it should, then it should continue until it doesn't. Those are the days you make real money. Moving right along. So even though we didn't have any stocks on the move today, by 10.30 a.m. you can see already, first hour in the books, those traders that rode the market long this morning were rewarded. Nice job. Now here we go. We have the makings of a mid-morning pivot on our hands. Now I'm telling traders, I'm telling inside the numbers members what to expect next. What am I looking for? It's inside my head, moving right along. After a little pullback, they stay bullish and they jolt higher for another run. To where? ES2400. Why? Not because we said they were going to get there, but because under normal garden variety market conditions, they're going to get there. These numbers are magnetic, and obviously the amount of points, the amount of sheer movement the market is making, they're going to get there when they get close. These numbers are magnetic to price, moving right along. Now here's something else that you need to take into account. The 1215 post. Take a look at the daily chart and focus on the last big breakdown candle from Friday. Why? Something we discuss all the time. Markets love to test breakdown candle highs and breakup candle lows. The high of said breakup candle is SPY 244.47. They may or may not get there today or tomorrow, but they'll try. Another awareness thing, remember SPY 240. That kept showing up inside the numbers day after day after day, and we were able to use it as an intraday pivot. It's an important number, so it's still on the top of mind, moving right along. And the market just keeps stepping higher. In the 1225 post, here it is, we were talking about 2425, and what happens just minutes later, we're at or headed to 2425. It's still the duck. As long as it's a duck, you go with it, moving right along. Now, as it turned out, 2425 was a pretty decent area of overhead resistance. They had a real nice pullback off 2425. I think, if I remember correctly, something like 75 S&P handles when it was all said and done. Had I known that was coming, I would have stepped in the short side with three hands. You can't catch every trade. Now, we still have something to talk about, right? Look at 227. Still inside the opening range low. So as long as they're inside of a range that we identified way, way back from this morning, all they're doing is staying in the chop shop. Shaking out the weak hands, they shake them out in the morning, they shake them out in the afternoon. They're always trying to shake out the weak hands. Moving right along into the end of the day, we're potentially looking for a short squeeze into the end of the day. They started to squeeze them, but they really needed to get above and stay above the earlier morning highs. They tested them, but they really couldn't do it, and we never got that next phase of a really violent short squeeze. Doesn't mean it can't come tomorrow, just means it didn't come this afternoon. Now, let's translate the commentary into real numbers and money. So you can see the gap up here, and everything to the right is today's activity on this 5-minute ES S&P E-mini chart. Now remember the numbers from the commentary, 2350, 2385, 2425. You tell me that these numbers aren't helpful to somebody active in the market during the day. Now, if the S&P is headed to a distant number, for example, from 2385 to 2425, that's some space. There's room to go. What's happening in the interim? A lot of stocks are moving right up the chain along with the S&P, along with the NASDAQ, along with the IWM, along with the Dow. Everything trades together. A rising tide lifts all boats. Right now, it's all the same market. Everything is just one thing. Everything moves in a different magnitude, but if everything's going up, everything's going up. 
If everything's going down, everything's going down. That's just the way it is. But at one point, do you scratch your head and say, all right, well, maybe he's onto something with these numbers. Maybe I can make some money if I knew these numbers ahead of time. You think? Remember the number from the SPY that referenced the breakdown candle high that was found in the commentary? It was 244.47. What happened into the end of the day? The market was making a run for that breakdown candle high. In the big scheme of things, it came up pennies short. But we talked about it hours earlier. It's an awareness. When you see the market doing a certain thing, and you know the thing they're likely to do the majority of the time, at least using the 80-20 rule, you put that together and you have a trade on your hands. You know what they're trying to do, and then you know where they're likely to run into what? Overhead resistance. They could get through there tomorrow. They could have got through there today. But the majority of the time, they're not going to just waltz right through an area like that. That's just the way the market works over and over and over again. You know that because I've showed you that a thousand times. All right, back to the daily chart. Now, now that all the bear people, the people that are short the market, continue to be short the market, now that they've hit the dislike button, let's talk about the downside. What happens if they botch the deal, meaning Congress? We have another TARP situation where they can't pass what's needed for the American people. I mean, a little bit of a side note here. There's no choice here. Millions and millions of Americans need a bailout, and they need it today. When the government says that we've got to stay home, and the states and the local communities start mandating, shutting businesses, you can't be in business because of the whole social distancing thing, and we all get that, but when government mandates that, they have to come to the window to make good on everything that people are losing. People's lives are at stake. The market's one thing. This is something different. So, all that being said, if they botch the deal, what happens to the market? Well, then they kill the market. So there's really three areas of interest for now. Inside the numbers, members will have a whole different set of chips on the table if that's happening in the morning. But for now, we're looking at the low of day today, the gap fill from yesterday, that's the gap left open from yesterday's close. So that number happens to be 228.19, remember that? Of course you do. And then below that is the former low, which is the low of yesterday. And then we're back into the abyss. All in all, we should see follow through. Now, if we see follow through, where are they going? I wasn't going to put it in here, but there it is. So that's my take on where they're going. And it's not where they're going finally, big top, and then we go back down. This is an interim number, or this zone, these two numbers, 257, 259 in the SPY. How am I looking at this? This is where I believe they can get to on another or continued short squeeze. Can they get higher? Of course they can get higher. How much higher past that? I don't know, maybe 2 or $3, maybe a little bit more, another 20, 30, 50 S&P handles. Much beyond that, I don't think they get there. I think they peter out. But here's what could happen. So I'm projecting, right? We're pre-planning a little bit. Let's say they do that. That very well could be the A of the ABC type pattern. Why do I say that? Well, it's one of those, have seen this before, read the book, been to the movie, and not my first rodeo. Now, there's no guarantee this happens, but here's the scenario. They jam the market up higher, they pass the deal, whatever it is, everybody feels good, and they jam it up higher. Another 100, 125, 150 S&P handles. Maybe that takes a day, maybe it takes two days. At this pace, it could take 10 minutes. Then, think about this for a second. What's the market's job? The market's job is to make as many traders and investors look like fools as much of the time as possible. So go with me on this. They jam it up higher. The feeling is good. The sentiment out there is good. Therefore, they're starting to suck in as many bulls as they can, thinking the correction's over. They don't want to miss the recovery. Looks like a V-bottom. They're talking about a V-bottom. If it talks like a duck, walks like a duck, smells like a duck, you might as well hop on board. Just as who? John and Mary Lunch Bucket. Just as they hop on board, what happens? They pull the rug out for the sea leg 
of the ABC pattern. You know the rest. John and Mary get out at the bottom of the B leg, and then they take the market higher past the high of the A leg, officially completing the ABC pattern. It's a little early, but it's a great story. Happens all the time. And by the way, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. What about Camp IWM? Now, this was giving us some signals, some clues. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about it for the last couple of days. We had divergence from the S&P 500. Therefore, it's of no surprise. We were looking for upside. We were looking for a low. The market did somewhat of a fake out by making a new low yesterday. Frankly, I didn't think they were going to do that. But I'm not exactly ready to put on a schmuck shirt yet. This is a tough market. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. But guess what? The IWM, without a doubt, gave us some clues. We talked about it a couple of times. Same deal with the transportation department. We talked about it last night. They never made a new low. Isn't that the way the market starts painting a picture? It was a puzzle piece. It was on the table. The IWM was on the table. Well, why do you think it's on the table? Because we're trying to get the picture of what's coming next. It's taking some time. We talked about turning an aircraft carrier in a pond. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to just swing around. In order to move this thing, you need what? All hands on deck. We need all hands on deck in this country to turn things around. We're going to do that. The heartbeat of America is small business. We have to save small business. There's only so long a small business person can be out of business with no revenue before they're just forced to shut their doors permanently, not able to reopen. The government knows this. It's not a time to be playing political football. It's not a time to be shoving pork in this thing, in the bill. It's time to do the right thing one time. And yes, I'm talking to our fearless leaders up there in Capitol Hill. Sorry for the soapbox. I feel strongly about small business. How about the Qs? We talked about this one yesterday. It was different than the rest. We did make a new low, but they finished well off the low. And guess what? There's your rally today. And guess what? Got above, closed above that breakdown candle high. Is that bullish or bearish? You know the answer. That's bullish. Are we going to expect the market to collapse tomorrow? No, we're not. Can the market collapse any day? Of course. It's a matter of expectation versus awareness. We talked about this one. It was showtime down at that number for the XLF. The show went on. Up over 12.5% across the financials. Here's another one we talked about yesterday. The SMH. We had relative strength. Again, these things are puzzle pieces. They go on the table. They form a picture. The picture's bullish. The picture was bullish. We were looking for a low. Took a couple of extra days. But guess what? They're forming a low. Is it going to be a long-lasting low? We don't know. It could be a low for a week, for three days. We don't know. They're putting in a low. They're going to have a rip-your-face-off rally. It's halfway home already. And before you know it, they've taken back 25%, 35% of the initial decline. I shouldn't say initial decline. I should say total decline so far. After they take back a third plus or minus, we'll see what happens up there. But at minimum, there should be a stutter step. What does a third or so of the decline represent? 257, 259, in that neighborhood. It's not where the numbers come from. Where do they come from? They come from the calculator. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you and that without you, these videos are not possible? Factual information. Thank you. I appreciate the vote of confidence across the board. This is a good place to pull the ripcord for today. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.